Hello and welcome back, everybody. Here we are again with the Some Low Grade Gamers podcast, episode 21 this week. We're all legally allowed to drink in every country of the world. Does that feel good, guys? It feels good. Yeah, I'm I'm excited. (laughs) All right. So my name is Tom. And as usual, I am joined by the other half of some kind of gaming, Laura over here. How are you doing, Laura? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you very much for asking. Good. And we are joined by Dan, who is the low-grade gamer half of the name. How are you doing, Dan? Good, good. How are we all? Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. So now that we're all good, such exciting answers today. We're gonna even if I'm bad, I never say, Oh, I'm shit. Why not? Yeah, what are we doing? I don't know. I just feel spill it. Huh? Spill the beans on podcast. (laughs) Spill the beans. Yeah, that's no, I, I am actually good, but yeah, I don't know. Just the classic. That's classic girl, isn't yeah. it? I'm fine or whatever, I suppose. Yeah. I think it's just everyone. Yeah, yeah. because yeah. I don't How know. I'm... I'm a bit tired. Yeah, I'm a bit tired. Thank you. Does that help? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's more honest. I like that. Good on you. Good on you, Dan, for being true. Mm. It's right to feel things. <laughs> we're all human. We're not robots. No, we're not. No. I wish I was, though. That'd be kind of cool. Apart from the, like, living forever thing, Oil watching changes. everybody around you die. No, nah, that's fine. You like that, do you? Oh, I mean, sick. So you get new friends, don't you? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> uh, this is not a robot podcast, although it would be pretty cool. It would be. It's a gaming podcast. So we're just going to uh, bring in the segment where we go over what we've been playing in the last couple of weeks because we did miss last week. Um, thanks to Laura and I, we are. Uh, Sorry about that. Yeah, had a, had a big night. But Dan was also tired, so don't feel too bad about it. All right, so we're going to go over what we've been playing for a little bit there. Dan has some exciting news for you all. Then we've got a brand new competitor in the handheld gaming market, which is pretty, pretty nice. Got the Steam Deck, obviously, has uh, been rolling out. But this is a you know, brand new competitor to Sam's uh, some interesting things there. It seems really nice, actually. I think I'm it might down. do well. I'm down. Then there is the uh, obvious news of the Xenoblade 3 and Splatoon 3 release dates have been confirmed by Nintendo. So there's a bunch of stuff to go over there as well. But I think we're first going to start by asking Laura what she's been playing these last couple of weeks. What have you been up to, Laura? What have you been doing now? Well, we're moving house next week. So aside from packing. Yep. Oh, yeah. That explains these boxes here. Yeah, Sorry about that. Just in the background. Those. Mm. I was packing them, but then I realized uh, that I accidentally packed everything in the lid section of the box, mm. which doesn't have much structural integrity. So I'm going to have to unpack it, put it back in the base there. So that's what I've been doing. But other than that, We recently made a YouTube video about um, the best cozy cat games on the Switch. So we were doing heaps of research for that. But after we did it, I was like, you know, sometimes I just want to play like a badass game. Mm -hmm. I love my cozy games. Don't get me wrong. But I was really feeling like I wanted to play like a badass game. So I started playing Astral Chain. Mm, that is a game yeah it's really good i think you would it. like that too dan actually if you haven't given that a go not yet heard about it it's very good yeah it's um it's one of the more mature i guess nintendo releases uh very like action orientated and it's super unique as well with its battle system you essentially mm. control two characters mm-hmm. so how are you finding that yeah it's really good yeah your legions yeah i love the leash thing i love like tying the baddies up yeah it's really cool mm. yeah so i've played through the whole game um i i think it's really great and yeah essentially you're you're like a police officer mm-hmm. and so there's all these like detective bits in levels and then it's tied into like this alternate world where you go and um fight big monsters basically who are like trying to take over the world and um yeah you 
basically like catch one of these monsters and they become like your legions and you can control them and they're tied to you with a chain, hence the astral chain. Mm. Yeah. So um, there's all different types and it's it's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's a really awesome game. Yeah. So I'm glad I started playing that. So you find it fun so far? Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad. Well, I'm going to go next because we're going to save the best for last because Dan has some exciting exciting stuff. Um, as Laura mentioned, we made a, a cat games video. So I have played cat games. a lot of cat games, some yeah. of them terrible. Yeah, there's some there's real a lot of shovelware shockers in there. On the Switch, that's for wow. sure. Uh, but Cat Quest 1 and 2, highly recommend. I think I've actually got the, excuse me. Here we go. If you're watching this on YouTube, I've got the uh, box. The box there. Yeah, Cat Quest One and Two. Highly recommend. Super cute, super cozy, open world RPGs. If that interests anyone, I know people think of stuff like Skyrim and shit like that, but they can also be like, you know, five hours long and and cute and cats, man, cats. The second one has dogs too. If you like dogs, just saying. So your dog person but yeah um that's pretty much all i've been doing especially because as laura said again we are moving and uh that shit is stressful man mm, we don't even have a bed no no we've got to go buy a mattress and yeah heaps and a microwave and just mm. yeah a whole lot of stuff so that is uh taking up quite a lot of our lives recently unfortunately a mattress. i've heard really good things about them i want a feather top the koala mattress is the best thing I ever bought for my back. Oh, far. you have one? Yeah. Ooh. What is what is the does it have koalas in it or something? Yeah, they no, that would be highly illegal. No, koala you, koala fur. Right you do a dot koala. koala every time you buy one. So, oh, really? Yes. That's I awesome. One, I bought one for my daughter as well. A mattress, not a koala. What do you name your koala? koala? Oh, you just get a certificate, so you adopted it, whatever. Uh, oh, but she was really ex- she was really excited that she got to adopt a koala. But literally, the delivery time is insane. Really? And, oh, yeah. That's literally you could order it today; you'd have it tomorrow, easily. Cool. That's nice. That could be nice because yeah, we are. We have got a moving truck, so the delivery is not. Super nest. Oh, what the hell? Yeah, these it's mattresses like a, apparently super. It's like a box. Super good. And it will, like, yeah. once you open it up, once you unleash the beast, <laughs> you, you will never get it back in that box. <laughs> Is it memory foam? I don't know. It's a killer, it's a killer mattress. I like it. I'm a fan. Five stars. Koala. All right. okay. Interesting. Oh, and, and you get a little koala up. toy. Okay, so a bunch of koala stuff. I okay. like it. Good. Mm, makes so, up for them, you know, killing 10 koalas to make a mattress out of pelts. Yeah. <laughs> Lovely. But no, they're, 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 <laughs> yeah. really, they're really good. Decent price. And uh, I reckon we should do a mattress review. <laughs> stuff game. Yeah, why not? Let's do I, it. Think we're already, I think we're already at Sponsor it. Sponsor us, yeah. koala. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, please. We could really go for one. That'd be great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I understand. Uh, all right, Dan, what have you been playing? Hopefully, while you're in bed on your koala mattress. Is that, that is actually where I have been gaming. Yes. <laughs> nice. I recently acquired a PlayStation 5. Mm. Woo, yeah. Woo, the stream is brr, confetti. Brr. Yes. I have good things and bad things to say about it. Mm-hmm. Bad things? What? Yeah, I, I think the battery life on the controller is a little poor. Uh, but that also yeah, makes I would agree with that. sense because of how much more is packed in to that than the Xbox controller. So yeah. I found that to be a little bit annoying. I've also found third Do have party. Two? Huh? Do you have two controllers? No, just one. Not really. Yeah, to, yeah. Get two. Well, we we obviously have two, but yeah, that's the only way I've found. Otherwise, I would be running out of battery all the time. Yeah, I, look, even the charging docks 
the third party ones are absolute balls. I would mm. not recommend buying a third party charging dock. They just no, we don't have one of those. We just no, they, plug they her don't in work consistently. So I actually bought the genuine okay. PlayStation Five one, which does work, but it is nowhere near as good as what it should be. It should literally align itself with magnets rather than turn into a jiggling match. But that's my biggest negative uh, yep. about the about the PlayStation. That's other than that, okay. I think the PS5 the is a decent decent console. Mm -hmm. uh, but for me, if I only had to pick one console, for me it would still be my Xbox. And that's largely because of Game Pass. I think mm, yeah. the PlayStation 5, while it is a very, very nice console, don't get me wrong, I, for me, I would only be playing um, RPGs and such on it rather than any like Warzone or Apex Legends or anything like that. For me, the PlayStation 5 is, is my single player sort of console i think i don't think i'd deviate towards using it to play warzone or anything like that i think my xbox would still trump it uh just uh, i think correct me if i'm wrong but i think the xbox is just ever so slightly more powerful than the ps5 yeah look it, it depends on what statistic or stat you're looking at because the ssd mm -hmm. in the playstation 5 is more powerful but okay. other bits of the xbox are I do yep. think the lack of internal storage on the PS5 is absolutely abysmal. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. a bit of a shame. I agree. We're actually looking at upgrading ours now. Um, but yeah, I mean, we've only just kind of filled it or we're just about to, but we don't have anything like call of duty like if you were to download vanguard that that thing's huge so yeah if, if, if you would be pretty call much of duty on there you, that's it you no more PlayStation. Yeah, exactly uh, but look for me it, it has been fun i mean the fact that you get the playstation classics or hits whatever the hell they called it yeah so, i like that yeah mm -hmm. I, I thought that was quite good i finished god of war already uh nice I, is that the 2018 God of War? Yeah. Because that actually, that's something I didn't say we'd discuss, but I guess we are uh, seeing as though you brought it up. There's been uh, some more, more information on God of War Ragnarok that has come out this week, hasn't there? Yes. So are you excited? Having just played through the, the prequel, I guess you could say, are you excited for Ragnarok? Yeah, I think Ragnarok's going to be uh, fantastic. I really enjoyed playing God of War. I thought it was it was a really well put together game. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like there was any parts where I was unsure as to what was going on, if that made sense. I thought they did a really good yep. job of explaining everything as opposed to, say, Horizon Zero Dawn, where mm -hmm. I, the the sort of explanation or lack thereof was a little bit disappointing i mean it's a game you learn as you go but yeah um, that game really hits you with like a big piece of story then like lets you explore for like 10 hours and then hits you with more story and then yeah. again so it's like it gives you it in big chunks which can i agree that can get tiring when it's like, oh, I'll just play for another 10 minutes and you've got like uh, 20 data points to read and you're just saying, oh, I want to get to bed. But mm. that that happened to me, literally. <laughs> I got to yeah. a big story point at like two in the morning and I was like, God damn it. I guess yeah. I'm up till six now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, both games are very are very good. I The reason I picked up oh, I... Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn again, because I do have it on Steam, uh, the okay. reason I did pick it up on the PlayStation 5 was uh, thanks to Cash Converters, which for those that don't know, oh, it's like oh. a coffee shop. And... <laughs> yeah. I haven't awesome. heard about cashies for ages. I didn't man. know you oh. had cash converters in Australia. Yeah, man. Yeah. Where do you think people go to flog off the TVs they've stolen? Yeah, but they mislabeled the game. 
So they labeled what? it as a PSP game. And huh? yeah, so they had it for five dollars. So oh, yeah. You were just up. like, yes, it's a PSP game. Yeah, yeah definitely. So I picked up I Horizon don't Zero look at Dawn. The giant PS5 on the side. Five dollars and all the uh you know the code that you get in them. Yeah. Uh, for the complete edition, that was all claimable as well because whoever no. bought it before me did Shit. not claim any of that. And so I them. always forget to do that stuff. Yeah, I've still got a spear in Forbidden West that I don't know where my receipt is to claim that, but hopefully I'll find it one day. Well, Forbidden West is actually something I did pick up, so I haven't played that yet. Okay, I was going to ask you, because you've been talking about PS4 games. I know for a fact you've played PS2 games on it. Not that we'll, we won't get into that because we'll be on it forever. Jack uh, Max stuff. You know, yeah, it's so good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's so good. Uh, do you have... Gosh, ah, I got to not ask you. Otherwise, me and Dan will just bang on about it forever. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I was going to ask you, have you picked up any PS5 games? I've got Forbidden West. The only reason yeah. I haven't jumped into that yet is I wanted to try out God of War and I mm -hmm. also wanted to play Horizon Zero Dawn on the PlayStation before mm -hmm. I moved on to... Um, you should definitely finish it. It is... Forbidden West. So Forbidden I, I just West wanted is to compare sequel. them. That's, yeah. that's what I really wanted to do was do a you know still on the playstation 5 but a comparison in my mm -hmm. own head as to which it's almost extremely better i yeah i think there's but there's a lot of contention about it. i think people are already like a little bit nostalgic for zero dawn if you will um i i mean like it's a ps5 game forbidden west i just think that in itself better hardware it just beats it um there's yeah. a whole bunch of new mechanics like the climbing is just so far beyond anything that was in zero dawn so i personally think forbidden west i'd be interested to hear what you think but it is a shame that 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 the zero dawn came out like five years ago because it is very much picks up where it left off like all the characters are still there like even me who didn't play it five years ago I probably played the first one like a year or so ago now. And I was like, there's a couple of characters who like, you know, Aloy's interacting with like, oh yeah, you know, we did this together. And I was like, oh, I think I remember you. Mm. But there's, they're just such big games with so many people and there's so much character interaction and world building and don't get me wrong. That's a great thing. Mm. But yeah, it's just um, gets a little convoluted, I guess, in... Yeah in um forbidden west but yeah the machines are also cooler in forbidden west i like that so many cool machines it's the whole reason i bought that game yeah i mean i'm pretty keen to get to there i just yeah i want to finish zero dawn first and I, honestly nah, for me, you can God complete of War, as many side missions as you can like just yeah, yeah go to town on it yeah to, for you sure you can't start falling into the trap where you like start another game before you finish the one you're playing because then it just never ends. Laura's yeah. literally playing like five games. So no, I, I shouldn't have God started out. So I finished, I finished the main story of God of War pretty quick. There's still things mm -hmm. I can go back and do, which I will jump back in and do at some point because I, I honestly really enjoyed God of War. Yeah, good. I, I think it was uh, a really good game. There are some parts of it that I, I didn't like in terms of the traveling. Um, I, don't, I don't think they really nailed that. Yeah, it was just, I don't know, just feels a bit weird going into another realm and then waiting until the door comes up so then you can go to the next door. Like, I, I didn't like that part of it. I understood it, but I didn't like it. Uh, yep. But overall, I loved God of War, so Ragnarok will definitely be on the list. But yep. for me, the PlayStation 5 is definitely a single-player console for me. That's it, what PlayStation does best, yeah, that's for sure. It, it definitely won't be a... like. It definitely won't replace my Xbox in any way, shape, or form. Like it, it's Game Pass, to me, just absolutely obliterates anything that the PlayStation currently has 
uh, mm -hmm. going for it. So, you know, with the limited time that I have, it's not like I can sit here and play games for hours and hours and hours and days and days and days. And, uh, wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, and for me, the Xbox is just uh, set up uh, a little bit better. I did find the setup process of the PlayStation 5 to be really long. Is that just me? Um, I can't even really remember. Yeah, it's, it's like. been a while. We got one probably a year ago now. Um, yeah. Not long enough for me to remember it being long. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Compared to the yeah, Xbox. exactly. Yeah, not long enough that it sticks in the memory. Yeah, I mean, like just not compared to long. the Xbox, I pulled my phone out, log in, and the Xbox just was golden. Whereas mm. the PlayStation 5, I had a PlayStation account. I logged in. I knew my password. But mm. it still took ages. And they, they're really, uh, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't, uh, it was not a huge issue, but I just felt like I was answering, answering the same questions over and over again. So uh, overall, okay. I think the PlayStation 5 is a great console. Uh, Astro's Playroom is a great example of what you can do with the controller. I didn't really enjoy the game. I was going to ask about that. Yeah, it's actually really fun. I yeah, really I, enjoyed that little I got, playthrough. I got a little bit bored because I was I, I was more keen to jump into God of War. So, yeah. uh, which on God of War, GeForce Now, the streaming uh, service for uh, NVIDIA in Australia has now just announced that God of War is available to play on there as well, which is pretty insane. So if you don't have a PC or a Mac or even an iPad capable of running God of War, you can actually still purchase it and play it on uh, NVIDIA's GeForce uh, system by Pentanet. So that's, that's if absolutely If your awesome. actually works well. Yes, that's... Which is a big thing in Australia, unfortunately. Yeah, for me, I don't. Well, it depends. I was actually meant to enter a Halo competition recently, and <gasps> I could not do it because my latency had gone to crapola. So I was. That bit, sucks. Yeah, I yeah. was a little bit disappointed. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, like, uh, PlayStation has actually just announced that their cloud streaming service is not coming to Australia at least like soon um, and I mean while I'm disappointed obviously it's it's just not surprising like I'm glad that we've got the Xbox and the Nvidia and stuff but where we live where we are they're just they're just not feasible anyway like they just don't work because our internet is too bad and to be honest like we're moving like 30 minutes closer to the city as we've mentioned and I still don't think it's going to be, like, doable. Uh, mm. Maybe for some, you know, like, smaller games, like, probably some, like, indie titles and stuff would work fine. But anything that's competitive, it's just not not uh, viable at all. I've got 100 megabits per second download speed, yep. and, I, and I hit about 98. For me... I can sort of stream whatever I want, but if I was doing competitive, I would not be, I would not be streaming. Yep. I can, I can tell yep. you that right now. I, I would not be. Yeah. Well, Brawlhalla works okay on GeForce now. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's good. I, I did some back kicking on that. Yeah, that's such a good game. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I do, I do like that. I do understand PlayStation's or Sony's point of view here. So, and a lot of people yeah, just aren't, aren't getting it. Which, so a lot of people blaming the government, right? They go, the government gave us shit internet. That's why PlayStation doesn't want to come down here. That's bullshit. That is mm -hmm. not why Sony aren't coming down here. The reason, right, you can quote me on this. I'm very, I'm on this. The reason is, so Microsoft have more than just Xbox. So their yes. cloud stuff, They've got servers in multiple locations, not just to service the cloud gaming side of things. It's to service other sort other things. Sony, on the other hand, don't have that luxury. 
So, so not having that luxury, there is no point in investing in Australia, a place with 25 million people, which how many of those people actually use PlayStation? And have access to reasonable internet to actually, yes. because to actually, you can't just set up one on the East Coast and expect it to work for the West Coast. It's yeah. we're too big for that. It's so just, it, yeah, it's just too big and not densely populated ex- enough. Exactly. Yeah. I feel so, like it's more the population density rather than necessarily the amount because mm. it's just that. If have it's, to, yeah, the amount, but in a way smaller place, then it's the density. Yeah, more, it so. might be worth their time to set up one server, but the fact they have to set up multiple. They would ones. have to set up so many different servers. It's, yeah, it's, it's just it's just a waste of time. Like. 100%. I'm so, sure that, look, I'm sure the internet's a factor for them. Oh, yeah, uh, it, for it, sure. is, it is somewhat a factor, but it's yeah. not the, it's it's not not the leading, all end all. It's not the leading cause. Like, you know, like how many, how many of 25 million people are actually playing PlayStation? And how yeah, many of those people played. are going to actually stream PlayStation stuff? Mm. It, is, it is insignificant and that, that's what people don't get. You know, let's blame the government and blah, blah, blah. Don't get me wrong. I hate the government too. I'm Italian. Yeah. I always hate the government. <laughs> but it, it's not them. As, uh, well, it is partly. But yeah. at the same time, there's, there's just no point. And nah. even like, even Xbox's cloud gaming, that's in beta still. That's, that's not a, yeah, there you go. That's not a full release. That's, that's in beta. And while it works fantastically, like I, I think, I, I think it works really well. I've even, got, I've even got it working on a Google TV at the moment. Uh, oh, cool. Yeah, side loaded the, the app, but it's like it's it's fine for just one player games, but you, you definitely, as you said, no no competitive stuff. But yeah, no, definitely yeah. not. Definitely not. Yeah, if I'd sum up the PlayStation, my experience with the PlayStation versus the Xbox, because that's the comparison that everybody wants to make. If I, like I said, if I could only have one, I'd have the Xbox because of Game Pass. Mm-hmm. And the way I play the Xbox is more competitive. But mm-hmm. having two is absolutely awesome. I, yeah, I, that, that's the yeah. ideal situation, yeah, isn't it? I, I, mm. I love that. I mean, Spider Man was a bit boring. I wasn't too interested in that. Not the Miles Morales one. Really? The other one. Really? Yeah. Oh, the other one. Yeah, the first one that they. I thought it was great. On PS4. Uh, mm. I got. Look, and it wasn't bad. I just, after playing God of War and then playing that, I was a bit like, eh. I um, like superheroes. <laughs> yeah, I, I like the Winnersauce. But, yeah, almost a hero type of guy. Yeah, no, look, I, I, I really want to play Miles Morales. I think that would that's, be that is yeah. good. That yeah. that's I, really good. I that's why that I thought you were talking about it first. I was like, wow. I, no, Miles no. Morales is one of those games where I literally stopped eating and sleeping. Yeah, like I, I just played that game. It's crazy. For me though, I just come off God of War, and I had Horizon Zero Dawn sitting there, and mm-hmm. I've got Horizon Forbidden West. And that Spider-Man game just didn't grab me enough. It just wasn't Fair enough. like to like I was literally playing it. I was sitting there going, I really want to stop playing this and play Horizon Zero Dawn. So hmm. maybe I'll pick it up if I've got Yeah, I I recommend giving another go if you can. I it, I just love the mechanics in those games. It's just so fun, just like swinging around everywhere and yeah, I mean, I mean I the fact to play that you it fight of... like Sinister Six is also like freaking awesome, but that's just a personal thing, I guess. Mm. I, I like, like a lot of the heroes. I like the uh, Spider Man Two from PlayStation Two, so that's why I sort of <laughs> yeah, yeah. Play it. but <laughs> yeah, 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 but yeah, it's yeah. Look, it, it's not a bad game. It's just the games that I had waiting in the wings. Like I still want to play Ratchet yeah, and Clank. Yeah. Like no, it, it just didn't enough, it yeah. didn't hold me long enough to go. Yes, I definitely want to play mm. this over Forbidden uh, over Horizon Zero Dawn, and then 
Forbidden West and, and whatever else is on. So, yeah. Fair I mean, enough. PlayStation 5, That's good console. Don't buy third-party uh, controller chargers because they're all shit. And good I, advice. I dislike the battery life. On it, yeah, yeah. You got a bit of give, bit of take there for the features. I feel, yeah. Oh, um, look, it's that's yeah. no problem. But the thing is, like, even the dock is just like it really. It should be magnetic. Like, if my Xbox One, it just drops into place. Like, yes, I use the Elite controller, blah blah blah. But I, I would say the the Dual Sense controller is probably at that value if that makes mm. sense. So having yeah, a yeah. magnetic uh, slot just to like mag safe on the, on the, on the MacBook stuff, like just have a magnet that aligns the <laughs> pins properly rather than me dicking around with this stupid thing. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. L- little, little things, isn't it? That's good. Yeah. That's, I guess that's things. what it comes down to yeah. with these new consoles. You just got to like really nitpick to, to find the the good and the bad things, like mm. all the differences between the, the mm. PlayStation and the Xbox. But there is a lot of new consoles coming out these days. Yes, mm. there certainly is. So we've Good just heard about the Odin handheld, which, mm. um, first of all, great name. I love Odin. Mm. Fantastic. I'm very intrigued by this. Yeah. So, all right, Dan, why don't you tell us about the Odin? I feel like you're the one that brought it to our attention and stuff. So you start. I've got a few questions, as I'm sure Laura does as well. Mm. So it, this is on uh, Indiegogo, as a, you know, which is similar to Kickstarter. So it has. they have started shipping, though. They've, they've been shipping units. Yeah since 2021 which is yeah which is awesome so they, they've I'm already surprised we haven't heard about this sorry for interrupting but yeah if they're already shipping like it should be bigger news well i actually heard it from short circuit so i don't know if you guys watch that youtube uh video i mean everybody knows who linus tech tips are most of the most mm-hmm. of the time but um the the guy from short circuit is is like a spin-off from Linus Tech Tips, and he was actually uh, playing around with this console. And that's what sort of got me interested because this this thing is next level. This is mm. like a switch on crack. The, mm-hmm. the dock itself is is just amazing. It's got a spot in there that's for a hard drive, point, I think. Which, which is insane. You can have, you, you literally have a hard drive plugged into your dock. You, you've got multiple USB ports. You've got multiple USB-C ports. You've got an Ethernet port already, so you don't need to use the USB to yep. get Ethernet. Oh, I did true. find there's probably too many ports, but it's got... <laughs> yeah, it's an, ridiculous. It's got Nintendo 64 ports. It's got GameCube yep. ports. Like, this thing is next so level. So basically... What they're saying there is that this thing has no problem running. Um, not that I encourage it at all. Don't don't come for me, Nintendo ninjas, please. But uh, yeah, it runs uh, GameCube and 64 emulation quite well. I would yes. I would say. Mm, yes. Yeah. And that's, has, that's what so they're going for. So it's got five USB 3.0 ports. Yeah, that's is- that's a bit overkill. So yeah. Like, I mean, our computer has more than that, but it's a PC. It needs more. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How many USBs are you plugging into this thing at one time? I don't know. Especially that it's already got a gigabit Ethernet port and it's got a Type yeah. C port. I assume that's for charging. I'm, I'm going yeah, to take that as a charging port. It's yep, got most controllers. Yes. It's got uh, HDMI. Then yep. Yep. it's got the spot that you can remove on the back of the dock where you can put your hard drive. It's got the GameCube ports. It's, it's got it all. Dock, all the, the dock holes. alone. <laughs> it's amazing. I, mm. I, I'm in love with this dock. I think it is, it, it, it is just awesome. The fact that it's got, you can have a hard drive in it. You can like, it is only 
I'm just bringing it's up 500 the 500 Australian. Dan house. would buy the dock by itself. Yeah, yeah. sounds like you would. So yeah. the dock is Between I think you can, dollars. actually. Can't you? Between yeah. four and 500 Australian. No, the dock. Which is... Just, just the dock is $69. Oh, is it? Mm-hmm. Oh, there you go. Just, yeah, you just the, dock. the dock. Yeah. So if you look good. at a dock for $69, if you yeah. tried to replicate that with other dongles yeah yeah things you know, like if you tried getting a usb hub with five 3.0 ports a gigabit mm-hmm. ethernet type c hdmi blah 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 for 69 dollars that's insane yeah you laugh yeah you're plus, laughing so, plus the question with the dock is how so i i agree the dock is awesome but i just I can't help but feel that this is... I'm, I'm just going to be the devil's advocate here, by the way, guys, because I know you two are really excited. So Please. I feel like I need to be... Not necessarily the voice of reason. I just need to put forward these mm-hmm. conflicting ideas. Go on, then. And so I agree with wrong. you two. I agree with you two, just just to, like, get that clear. I think it, it looks awesome. But I just want to put forward these ideas. So the doc... The fact that you can plug a hard drive into it is awesome. But I feel like it's sending out a little bit of a mixed message there by the fact that this thing is a handheld, it's being marketed as a handheld, but then all of a sudden you have two terabytes worth of games that you can only play while it's docked. Mm. So, but it's also got like, a card. Yeah, yeah, but... So uh, yeah, it's just... like saying, what's the point in the Switch having a dock? No, it's so not. You can play it on the TV. Yeah, no, but you can play any game on the TV and you can be like, oh, damn, I need to go to the toilet now. Whoop, yoink. And there we go. But with this one, you're like, oh, crap, I've got, you know, I'm playing God of War, for example, just because we're talking about it. Uh, it's only on my hard drive. I need to go to the toilet. I have to leave it there, which, again, it's not like it's the PlayStation. You can't do that, you know? Um, but yeah, this thing has been marketed as a handheld, but it's still it's very much a, a, having the opportunity to have those games in one place rather than no place like the Switch. Yeah, yeah, That's, I just feel like it's a bit of a mixed signals, I guess. You know, I, like I it's just the, w- the way. What does it want to be? The what is the I Switch? It's like asking it. what the Switch wants to be, though. No, it's not. The it Switch doesn't is, have though. games you can only play docked. No, but yeah, like that's my point. Yeah, okay. You've got games you can only yeah. play when you're connected to the internet. And then, yeah, through cloud gaming that doesn't exist here, though. Whew, thank God for that. So I understand that point. Uh, I also think you're wrong. But that's okay. You're, you're, you know, you're allowed to be wrong sometimes, Tom. Mm. No, look, I, I, think, I think it's a valid point, but I also think the idea of the hard drive is to have basically every game that you've got on there if that makes sense so it'll be interesting to see what the file management system is like so yes. as an example if it is docked how easy is it to move a game from the hard drive to uh odin yeah that's that system so, is going to what make or break that whole idea because yeah. if you if you can't if you can't do that or if it's super convoluted, then it just makes things really difficult and, you know, from what I said. But, yeah, if it's easy and it's basically just acts as, like, a backup for all your old games that you don't necessarily want to get rid of but you also are not actively playing, mm-hmm. then it, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. I, I think what it brings to the table far exceeds what it doesn't bring to the table. I mean, the no, way I, agree. I agree. Is, the best is... thing about this is that it runs Windows. Mm-hmm. That's which is honestly a little bit confusing on their page because it says it can. Android. It's only confusing because you only read half of it. Yeah, okay, I didn't understand what they were talking about. <laughs> if yeah. you'd kept reading, then you would have understood. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it says. It bangs on about Android and then it says Odin is a proud supporter of the Windows on ARM open source project. Advanced users can make full use of Windows instead of Android to play their favorite compatible PC games. So I was like, oh, 
like I didn't read that end bit. So I was like, oh, it only runs Android. That's it's, that's interesting, but yeah, it doesn't. It, it it also runs PC through Android though. I mean, it runs micro, it runs Windows. You know what I mean? I um, I think the fact that they are promoting open source for advanced users is fantastic. It gives people more choice. The 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 console absolutely. alone. I'd prefer probably an inch bigger. Uh, I think it's at 5.98 inches. So let's we'll round it up to six. So a six inch screen, I'd probably prefer a seven inch. For me, bigger is always better. I that that would be my only why are you giggling over there? I'm sorry, <laughs> Nothing. Uh, I, ca I can't even imagine how big that is i think that the oled is seven is the oled seven or eight inches seven Pretty sure okay the so the seven regular seven switch is like the regular seven. switch yeah, yeah totally yeah okay That's what you okay sort of yeah compare it to but i also think yep. ergonomically this is far superior to the switch to the switch yeah 100 yeah. percent. yeah the, the grips on the yeah. back mm -hmm. um yeah. i like that but i still think i would end up putting a grip on this thing Anyway, we have a bunch of Joy-Cons. If, if you're watching it on, us on YouTube, you can see a couple of uh, third-party Joy-Cons on there. We've also got a video if you're interested. Uh, and they all have grips on them, or what well, some of them do. But I still find myself going back to the regular Joy-Cons with a specific grip. I find that by far the most comfortable way to play the Switch, even if it does add a little bit of weight, of course, through the grip. Um, mm. I don't know if you agree with me in that, Laura. Um, well, I haven't been able to use one of those grips for so long since I got my OLED. Mm, that's true. That's true. Um, yeah. So I yeah. guess you've been playing with the the. I've just been playing grips. with the regular Joy Cons with my with a, like a plastic case on mm. at the moment. So yeah, I haven't really had much grips in my life. I guess. Lately. It... But I probably like these grips look really good. Like it looks like comparable to some of the other joy cons that we have yeah i i guess i don't think i just don't think that it's going to make enough of a difference for me to be like oh this definitely doesn't need a a um oh i mean it could use grip. one yeah but, but i think that it would be comfortable better than that nothing one. that's yeah better sure. than the, it's oh. better than the switch i think that yeah. was the i think you'd get point. another hour or so out of it before your hands got sore i, um, I think if, I, if we were to compare this to the steam deck and the switch yes that's... i wanted to do that next yeah so i've got a few questions let's go let, let's go from the, the start right of what yep. we were talking about Please. So the dock the dock on mm -hmm. this destroys the switch yeah in in every single way and it also yep. destroys the steam Steve deck, deck because one. they don't have a dock so they don't have one exactly yep so i i think that is definitely one for for odin I mm -hmm. I think the next thing for Odin is that it will or does support Xbox Cloud Gaming mm -hmm. which is through actually, Windows. No, through through Android as well. Okay. Oh, so, there you go. I didn't know that. Yeah, so that that's absolutely epic. That's like next level as far as I'm I'm concerned. Uh, Android is such a capable OS. I mean, it's fragmented and it's got its issues. Don't get me wrong, but Android is. If if you've got something on Android, something like this, to me, the, the world is your oyster. Like there is so much that you could do with it, especially with a company that seems to be very engaged in open source stuff, which is really cool. I, I really like that. So I think if we had to compare, so number one, Doc, I think it beats yep. the Switch and it yep. obviously beats no, I agree. the Switch. I think in terms of software, for the average user, I'd probably lean towards the Switch. Uh, yeah, uh, I... I I think this Odin is is basically your knowledge level depends on 
like is directly relatable to how much you're going to get out of this thing, basically. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, well, no. the switch is just so like simple. It's, it's just it's, there, and it's it just really good is for your casual is. gamer. Hundred yeah. percent. I think you know the detachable Joy Cons as well. Just make it so user friendly and mm. so easy to pick up and play. Um, whereas this, again, like, you know, there's more to this literally says advanced users can do this. Like not mm. everyone is an advanced user. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, yeah so- I, I think, I think in terms of usability, the, the switch wins, I think that wins hands down on, on anything, but yeah, the, this is capable of more, yeah, mm-hmm. I think if you're an which is obviously, user, obvious as well, wise, this is, this is yeah. far superior. Uh, yes, I, yes. I think Steam Deck is probably in the same boat. Average user, uh, not really. But again, how many of the average user are purchasing the Steam Deck? Yeah, that's the thing. How many? How many casual gamers are purchasing anything like this? Because mm. if you're a casual gamer, I would, I would definitely say pick up, pick up the Switch, um, or a, or a PlayStation or an Xbox, even you know, um, if you don't. Not interested in handhelds. But if you uh, want whatever to games you want to play, pick up the system they're on, basically. Yeah. Uh, whereas this yeah. is very, yeah. This, yeah. this guys is, agree. is next level from operating system wise. You know, the fact that you can change it, similar to the Steam Deck, because Steam Deck, um, it, you know, allows a bit of that. Uh, Nintendo yeah, obviously it takes, a, do takes not. a bit of tweaking, it's a bit convoluted, apparently. Yes, There's been a lot of a lot of Steam decks coming out now, mm-hmm. which is yeah. a whole another thing I want to get into. Yeah, there's a there's a whole thing with the with the Steam Deck. I, I, Roll I out. Feel as the way this thing works, the fact that it's got a microphone on it, the joysticks apparently feel identical and look identical to the Switch. So potentially yeah, they, they're using the, joysticks the same one. Themselves. Yeah, interesting. So That's cool. That's I, nice. I do like D pad. I am a, I, I yep. think the D pad yep. is far Feels better lovely. than the, what the Switch has. But at the same time, mm-hmm. what a lot of people I think forget is the Switch, those Joy Cons are designed to be two yep. players as well, not just single. So you can't just, yep. like, they couldn't ship it with a D pad. Uh, no, nope. it's, yeah, it would make it unfair to the person that gets the D pad yes, controller. I, I, they're yeah, they're identical controllers yeah there's, without there's a reason that they're they're like that um of course i i think you know audio jack uh, i'm whatever but a lot of people really like the audio jack yeah i'm a big i want to plug my headphones in man i lose the car keys i, I literally laura cleaned the whole house yesterday while i was cooking all day and I literally lost the remote control to the TV in a sparkling clean house for like half an hour. I was like, where the ha- I, where, where did I put it? Where is it gone? I was he loses un- it was everything. under the couch. So under the under. couch. Yep. I what dropped it and kicked it under there. Oh my So uh, yeah, uh, AirPods and wireless headphones are not for me. Yes. I mean, <laughs> Let's look, just put I- it that way. I, I I prefer wireless, uh, as you can yep. see, but yeah, at the same their own. time, I I think digital is better than analog. Like for the average user, I just I think the three point five mil jack is dead. I don't. Mm-hmm. I, I I use the Type C. Would be my yeah okay yeah okay would be my sort of appeal. Like I've got Type C headphones and I've got Lightning headphones as well and i just think they work better because you know if you move around or something like that sometimes there's a bit of static and all that sort of thing with a 3.5 mil jack if you've got cheaper headphones which i think in most cases if you've got 3.5 the average user will have cheap shit headphones that's yeah the, yeah like, where, where I, think, I think USB-C and lightning circumvent that problem a, a bit but anyway I, I think the fact that it's got two buttons on the back as well which are mappable mm. is awesome yeah that's cool i like that 100 percent. so so far i if so far at, at this point if you had to buy a switch odin or steam deck i would i would be buying the odin 
Uh, where do you guys sit? So, sorry, Laurie, you go first. You go first. I am really intrigued by the Odin, but I'd want to play it first before I make before I decide yeah. to you can't do betray that. the Switch. You can't just go down to your local game store and be like, look, can I just try out the PS5? I wait till Dan orders his and then <laughs> yeah. I go to his house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that works. Yeah. Done. Fair enough. It looks really good though. I don't know. Like I would way I'd be way more likely to purchase this over the Steam Deck, I think. Yeah. So I think what the Steam Deck has over this is its button layout and its controls because this is obviously targeted towards a lot of PC games and the Steam Deck has all the layout, you know, like with the, the mouse pads and stuff that it's got mm -hmm. on it. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's a really, really cool idea and it makes it, means that far more games will be playable on it uh having said that there is issues with the steam deck of games not being available yeah. to play on it so i guess yeah, it's neither here nor there but my argument i just kind of rebutted my own argument there <laughs> but i do really like the the old button layout on that i think that's um that's really cool obviously the fact that steam deck's not available anywhere except the us is an issue uh, the fact that the pricing here is all in Hong Kong dollars originally means that it's probably far more accessible to someone like me. So that leans me towards that. But my final and kind of what seals the deal for me, and I feel like this is the most important thing when it comes to gaming full stop, what games do you want to play? I like Zelda's arguably my favorite series of games of all time. I love Mario. I love all the uh, third party entries like Fire Emblem and Maroon Factory. So for me, the games on the Switch is what kicks me over the light. If you don't, like those, if you're not interested in playing Mario's and Xenoblades and what whatever it is, then yeah, for sure, go for this, Odin. Uh, as you said, Dan, for the price, the the system it's on, uh, especially if you're a tech nerd, you could do a hell of a lot with this. I think, I think this probably wins in terms of that. But yeah, it all basically what I'm trying to say with the my Nintendo. Nintendo argument, the button layout on the Steam Deck, there's games that are not going to be playable on this. If you want to play those games, get that console. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I just think that that's in general, you know, like if you want to play Halo, get an Xbox. If you want to play God of War, get a PlayStation. If you want to play, is, if you want to play Wild, Halo, you can play Halo on this. Okay, they oh yeah, because the games pass. Yeah, of course. Okay, so the Xbox Epic. just don't worry about it. About it. Um yeah. <laughs> but you, you know what though, I, you know what I'm trying to say. It would it would the, the benefits that this has uh let, let's look at the base benefits, okay? So number one, I think this is more targeted for retro stuff. Um, mm, yeah, the emulation, but that's a whole nother thing. Like, there is so many emulators on the market now, like so many. And to be fair, not really any handheld GameCube or 64 emulators. But as far as emulators for all the other Nintendo handheld stuff, uh, there's so much on the market at the moment. So I, I know yeah. that emulators that are provided are, are sort of meant to be next level they're, they're mm -hmm. meant to be so fluid that you, you really don't notice any issues so yep. that's a big advantage to the steam deck because apparently the steam deck is not very good for emulation yeah, yeah. i've heard that struggle so, so why is that i don't know why that is it's yeah, because sorry. it's like a fork of the linux system so mm. it's, oh, it's yes. based on linux but it's different so the optimization has issues whereas android's relatively because it's open source 
is a lot easier to develop, especially if you're using the right stuff. So for, for me, this, this console wins out. I'll probably have one by the time I see you guys at PAX. I would say I will have one of these and bring it with me. Uh, the, the fact Perfect. That so do... I can play it and then I can decide what, then I can answer yeah. your question from earlier. Because so I can play Xbox games on here through cloud streaming. I can use NVIDIA GeForce Now on here as well mm -hmm. because it's based on Android. I'm just talking about the Android operating system, not the fact that I can download Windows on it. Let's, I'm just going to talk Android right now. Yeah, Plus, good. Because not everyone can do that. So it's important to just go the base model, yeah, I feel. Just just the the basic of, of what is really easy to achieve. Cloud mm -hmm. streaming with the Xbox, really easy to achieve. You download an app. The video mm -hmm. GeForce Now, really easy to achieve. You download an app. And both apps are really, really good. Now, the Xbox One is still in beta, but it, it is still fantastic. So mm -hmm. on top of all the emulation, you also have all the Xbox games available to you, plus any PC games through NVIDIA GeForce. So if which it won't be. If this console is unable to play God of War, you can still do so through the streaming service. Now, mm -hmm. will you be doing competitive gaming on here? Maybe if you play Call of Duty Mobile, as an example. I think this would trump any iPhone or Android. Mobile. Yeah. <laughs> point of view. Yeah. Doing that, you probably don't need this, though. Let's be honest. No. So, um, for me, this is a definite pickup. There is. Yeah, no. I'm there, excited to see that. There's a there's a caveat here, though. Mm. They've got the light version, the base version, and the pro. Yeah, that's convoluted already. Yeah, sort of like the switch. But, yeah, but at least it came out at different times, you know, like this is very much, it doesn't actually tell you no, what it's... the difference is yeah, anyway, at least on the page I'm looking at. No, no, you just got to scroll down. So, no, it, I scroll down. No, it, it, it is here. It is here. Like the light yeah, version. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it has... says base slash pro. Confusing. No, because pro is in blue and then it's in blue. It's got the right things. You got to read more than two seconds. The light. No. <laughs> That's my limit. One the light for thing. me is not a pickup. I would not be purchasing the light. MediaTek, nah. MediaTek, which which is the processor, uh, the CPU. Yeah. The fact that it's dual core. Yes, there's a six it's core uh, A55 there. Do yeah. not pick up the light. The, a MediaTek processor, in my opinion, is shit. Yeah. They're not good. I've um, never even heard of them. So Me MediaTek is massive. It is is absolutely huge in Android devices that are so okay. under eight eight hundred dollars. Yeah, so, I'm not a big person, so I'm not yeah. Yeah. Me sure. MediaTek's like the cheap yeah. CPU that you go Fair with enough. to keep costs down and blah blah blah. Yeah. So okay, so for cost efficient, I guess. Yeah, like if if you're going based on costs. And you're only going to be doing emulation, then MediaTek will oh, be fine. Yeah, this thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. The light, the light yeah. will be fine. If if you're going yeah. to try and push it a little bit further to its limits, which is which is what I will be yeah. doing, I'm definitely yeah. going the pro. The fact that you get the Snapdragon processor, yes. which is is no slouch. That's that's a decent yeah, dude. processor. Hundred uh, percent. Yeah. The GPU is good. RAM at eight gig is if. The operating system is optimized correctly. is not is not bad. That's that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah uh, four's four's not enough. Yeah, I, I don't. For me, no. I think for other people yeah, though, if you're great. just if you're picking this up as a retro device, uh, then yeah, you'll be fine. With yeah, four. well, I mean, how much uh, how much RAM did the GameCube and the sixty four have? Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I want to get this thing to push it to its absolute limits. That's what yeah, I'm going to be doing with it. So yeah, for me, good. I'll be going the pro. You get 128 gig of internal storage, which for me mm -hmm. is is preferable. Uh, yeah, it's nice. Like, I, I'll, I'll be getting this, and the do the battery's a little bit bigger in the pro version as well. Six thousand milliamps over yes. five thousand. Uh, I is. do. 
I do find there's a couple of weird things on here though. Yeah, I noticed that like the operating system is older on the Pro and the Bluetooth 5.0 compared to 5.2. Yeah. It's a little, it seems backwards. Yes. Um, and I don't yeah. know what this is. Again, keeping costs down, I think, because this is well, a big thing that they're pushing here is cost. That it's, yeah. Yep. Yeah. That it's, uh, I mean, you know, 500 to, to, bucks isn't cheap, but relatively, when the yeah. Steam Deck's what? 1500 yeah for us. something like that a lot more anyway yeah the, the base the base in the pro version is is having that snapdragon processor that that cpu is a is a decent pro like that that's decent that would have cost a bundle for them to get together so that's why i think you're losing out on the bluetooth a little bit which for me i don't really care what am i like, yeah, no, I agree. Bluetooth I agree. 5 is still really good for latency, so 5.2 is mm -hmm. really not going to give me that much. I do find Wi-Fi 6 being available on the light version to be like, what's going on there? Charging, the light has fast charging, whereas the Basin Pro only have quick charge, which, again, that, that would have to do with heating and cooling. So yes. that would be trying to cool the battery down. That that additional cost is significant. Like a lot of people look at the Oppo phones or the or the Xiaomi phones, you know, at how fast they charge. Like Xiaomi just released one, uh, like a video or something. It was like six minutes from zero to to one hundred percent. The thing is, what people oh, wow. don't realize is that's not just one battery in there most of the time. It's actually two or three or or four sometimes split up. And that's how they get it to go so quickly. So, uh, and again, I'm not too fussed. Like if it charges at a, at a decent speed, that's fine. What I find the weirdest though, is why the light is on Android 11 and the base and the pro is on Android 10 without reading their reasoning. Cause they, these guys have been like, if you go through the comments and check everything, these, these guys are open. Like they, yeah, they, they provide are. you They're clarity. Probably on on, 100%. on yep. everything and that's just yep. that's something that i haven't read yet uh so i'm sure it's in there though like they, these guys have just been so open with what's going on from what i can see i definitely recommend checking out the short circuit youtube video that that was really that was really good and that actually got me onto this and uh yes you know it's in Chinese, but at the same time, the light version is two hundred and seventy-two dollars Australian. The it's got cold grey, blah blah blah. I don't care about that. The base mm -hmm. is three hundred and twenty-nine. Yeah, and the Odin Pro is three hundred and ninety-six. Personally, I'd pick up the Odin Pro, um, or I think the Odin Pro Super Pack, which is four ninety. Three, I yep. think the super yeah. pack has the dock, the dock, and the yeah. cable, and um, a case, the bag earbuds, and charger, and stuff. Yeah, you so do, you do need to buy a. Well, if this is the console you're going for, and the only one, you will need to buy a controller if you plan on docking this as well. Yes, so that's the other thing. But it can use uh, Xbox, PlayStation. Uh, or mm. eight bit do as an example, it can use all of those controllers. Yeah. So for me, yep. I will probably be running this bad boy yep. for those that are on, on YouTube. So the uh, what is it called? Two the Pro two. Pro two. Uh, yep. I will yeah. probably be running that on it. Or ten out of ten. Yeah, I agree. Series X uh, controller, preferably because yep. yep. the PlayStation Five one has no battery life. Uh, it's just something to take into account. That's all. It's not. Yeah, a, it's no, not a no, deal. Definitely breaker. something that you need to keep. I feel like if you're gonna be buying something like this, like we were talking about before, it's not the most simple console of all time. So if you're gonna be buying something like this, you probably already have a controller lying around yeah. that you could use with it. Yes. Yeah. And, yeah. And definitely read read about it. Like read like like this thing here. Like the fact that it's got 64 controller ports on the dock yeah, as well so as GameCube. Like, pretty cool oh my god if i had if i, I had the bad. dollars right now 
to buy it, I, I would buy it this minute, this second. Uh, I want to buy it too. And the fact it's available this minute, this second is... We can also, get it in Australia? Yes, yes they yeah. been shipping there. Yeah. They have... Basically, there's certain hurdles that come with Indiegogo and, and Kickstarter stuff. With Indiegogo, uh, generally, it's, it's, you know, generally Indiegogo and Kickstarter aren't too bad, right? Especially mm -hmm. if you look at the updates, you look at what's happening and all that sort of stuff. These guys have gotten over the big hurdles. They've gotten over the, the pain in the ass hurdles that would stop it from shipping and it's shipping it's producing like uh, honestly i the more i talk about it the more i want to just hit that buy button and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well we'll have to we'll have to talk about it again when you actually get your hands on one yes. i just the final thing i want to say about this is that i really hope odin do well because it's not necessarily a gap in the market anymore with so like, it's not just the steam deck and the Odin that are the only handheld competitors, I guess you would say with the switch. That's not that they are really competitors with the switch, but we'll just roll with that that are out there, you know? So I really hope they actually find their place in the market. I am a little worried just because the Steam Deck has so much traction behind it. You know, if people are just going to be like, oh, you know, I'll just wait for that or, or whatever might come up there. So I really hope that, yeah, Odin actually um, actually gives this a red hot crack and that it works out for them. Like, best mm. of luck. Best well, of luck to them. I mean, I they have been... Uh, so they've hit all those major hurdles do you know what i mean like they've they've Start overcome they've overcome all the goals that they needed to to do they've they've overcome them the production goals and, and all that sort of stuff if you had to buy the steam deck or this right now realistically you could buy three of these for the price of a damn steam deck mm. I, I just don't think the steam deck while i agree with the controller layout of the steam deck is quite nice Mm -hmm. I still think this is fantastic because the Steam Deck is so expensive and it doesn't seem like it like obviously I've never played it but just from what I've seen about it on reviews and stuff it doesn't necessarily seem like it's totally worth $1500 or whatever it is. Yeah, I don't think it's the value pretty... is there compared to this. Compared to the no, Odin, I, I do not think, think so. the value is there. Plus okay, we're, totally, we're totally wrong about this price tag. Just, just so you know. What is it? I, I thought it was real expensive. If we're going the base model, um, which is 64 gig, it is 550. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. That, if we're going AU, or US? AU, so it's 400 US. Yeah. If we're going the pro version, which is 512 gigabyte uh, of storage, which beats the crap out of the Odin. Unfortunately, mm. there's not one at 128. Otherwise, I'd compare that. Um, but that one is 650 US dollars, which is 900, 900 Australian. Uh, just to clarify there for everyone, that's not, but it I is still- I don't know why I thought it was so expensive. Yeah, but... maybe it's enough. Maybe there's another handheld that's like 1,000, 1,500. Well, I mean, this is pretty much a thousand for the yeah nine hundred dollars for, for like but... the pro model, I guess you would call it. Regardless, yeah. yeah. Regardless, my point still stands. Mm -hmm. It still seems like the Odin seems more worth it for the price than the Steam Deck does because it can, well, the, yeah, Game Pass and if well, if you have a look at it as well, the Xbox emulation three hundred and sixty controller is one of the mm -hmm. most supported con controllers in the world. The 360 yeah, is. controller is everywhere. This has everything the 360 has. So mm -hmm. in terms of compatibility, I'm going to buy one, stuff it. I'm going to buy one and I'm, I'm, I'll chuck up a, uh, do, we'll it. do a podcast on it and, and talk about it because I really no, think that that. this thing is. Is I, next I, level. Yeah. I, I, 
definitely would prefer this over a Steam Deck, especially <laughs> having access to GeForce now and... Uh, yeah, you and, keep going back to that cloud gaming. That's a kicker for you. Yeah. It, and this has a dock it, too, so it's just got a whole other function that the yeah. Steam Deck doesn't have. Yeah, you can dock the Steam Deck through like cords and stuff, but yeah, it's yeah, not as convenient. Sure. From... It doesn't have yeah. so many holes. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't have all the holes. <laughs> 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 all right, well, I'm excited to find out more about this when um we actually managed to get our hands on one. But just quickly to round out the podcast this week, want to get on to a, a whole different topic. And that is, of course, the release dates of Xenoblade Chronicles 3 and Splatoon 3 have been announced. So these are two of uh, Nintendo, or arguably two of Nintendo's biggest releases of this year. A Splatoon is actually like... Splatoon's huge. It's massive. Yeah. It's way bigger than I expected it to be. Even like a year or so ago when I looked up the numbers, I was like, wait, what? It's huge. It's actually like Nintendo considers Splatoon one of their like like their forefront franchises. Mm. It's mm. Mario, Zelda, Animal Crossing, and Splatoon, which is, yeah, it's crazy to me. For such a new... A new series. I think that's good it's it. really fun, though, isn't it? It is a ton of fun. I love it. We don't have how you guys feel about Splatoon. Splatoon is really fun, but we haven't bought it because there's no local co op. Yeah. And it that's... is really fun, but we just didn't feel like it was worth buying two copies. Like, was it double the price fun? Yes, that's yeah. the issue for us. Because we want to play together, not like just online. Yeah. But they do have, you know how the Switch has um, that little thing that you can play a game for free for a month, like game, a game trial? Game trials, yeah. It was on a game trial, and we smashed that for the yeah. whole month. Like, every night we would come home and play Splatoon. I think we it was together. only available for a week or two, and we put, like, 40 hours into it in, like, mm -hmm. that one week. Mm -hmm. um, I, especially for me, because I'm not a fan of shooters, um it's just they're just not my thing that's okay don't, don't come for me please but they're just not they're, they're not my go-to genre of game uh splatoon it's just because it is a shooter at its core it's a shooter but it's just so different and it's such a unique concept and i just think it's so it's just fun classic nintendo it's just fun that's all you need to know. Mm -hmm. It's just a fun game. And I, I I like it. For me, it's it's my favorite shooter, probably. I'd probably have to go away and think about that, but it's definitely up there for me. And it's also okay. hugely popular in Japan. That's a that's a big kicker for Nintendo too. It's like the shooter of of Japan. Uh there's you know tournaments, it's super competitive. It's probably Nintendo's like the competitive Nintendo title, uh, at least of like what about now. Smash? I was going to say yeah. Smash Brothers. Smash, but, it has to be Smash. Yeah, but as far as like, like Nintendo sucks at organizing Smash tournaments, but they're actually good. Is what well, Smash Ultimate tournaments and they're shutting down a bunch of melee, like third, third party, if you will, organized melee tournaments mm. for being third party organized. Like Nintendo wants to do it themselves. Um, it, yeah, I know. That's a whole nother situation. That's classic this is, Nintendo. That's why I'm yeah. getting more and more it's, frustrated it's, with Nintendo, though. Like, it's I, I'm, money up for grabs. I'm up, like, I'm at my limits for accepting their brutality mm. of yeah, shutting they, they down, definitely... like, a, like, third party organized stuff. Like, you do a shit job. And somebody else does it better. So what? You're having a hissy fit. That like yeah, that makes weird decisions. The, the mm -hmm. Nintendo stuff to me. And look, I, I'm a little bit sour on my on the Switch right now because my touch screen is just phantom pressing things. So I'm a bit pissed off. So oh no, that's weird. Yeah, the whole left hand I've side. That yeah, and you check like uh, so you can check your touch screen. And it's like, are you sure your house just isn't haunted? Yeah, oh. it's just that left, or unless they've haunted. That Have left you cleansed it? 
Yeah, you should burn some sage, dude. Have you cleansed your house? I smashed it. That's step one. That didn't work either. That's why I want this Odin. No. It, yeah, it's, uh, it only works in docs mode now. I broke my I switch. That's why I want the Odin so I, bad. I can't I can't use it in uh, normal mode because it just keeps touching. I can't use it as a handheld right now. Weird. And, is uh, it drift or is it? No, no, no. Is touch screen is touching itself. It, that is it, so weird. It's really horny. <laughs> Damn, switch. Damn, uh, switch touching itself. What the hell? Yeah, little oh, bass. Horny so, little bass. Yeah, I'll see if I can take a video. I'll, 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 yeah. try and, yeah. I'll try and take a video of it. <laughs> Send them an email. Nintendo, just, my switch is touching itself. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, like, I'm just a bit over their attitude towards things. Like, they just, they sue children. Yeah, it's awesome. To protect their IP. It. It's like, <laughs> relax. Relax, guys. It's a kid. Yeah, yeah, fair so enough. I, I'm fair getting enough. a bit, I, I'm... Yeah, I, I'm getting a bit... I, look, the whole gaming scene right now, I'm a little bit over because... And I know I've gone off topic again, but did either of you see the latest Warzone trailer? Again, shooters. Mm. Not my okay. jam. Can you guess what franchise is being shoved into Warzone? Oh, yeah, they're doing a crossover, aren't they? Yeah, go on, remind me. I do know. Take take a guess, though. Laura, take a guess. What franchise? I don't know. Is it like Fortnite or something? No, they are smashing in Godzilla and King Kong into (sighs) Warzone. Yes. Yes. And it's actually an official video. That they mm-hmm. release. You yeah. know how Fortnite has all these skins and you mm. can swing like Spider Man and all that. Yeah. Stuff. yeah. Now you can be Godzilla in Warzone. It's just gonna why why do you look so disappointed, Dan? I thought you loved dinosaurs. I love dinosaurs. But Warzone Now you can the, be one. The idea of Call of Duty is to to purvey a realistic sense. Yeah. Right? To a point. Oh. Right? Obviously, not respawning. That's not a real thing. <laughs> it would be well, good. It's still a video game. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, still a video yeah. game. But, the, you know, the idea of I Call guess, of Duty is... I guess you're right. But That's it why I'm funny. not, like, into games like that, because it's too realistic for, yeah, I mean, for, to pique my interest. Oh, because if you wanted to go out there and fight 10 other people in a battle royale situation with freaking semi-automatic machine guns, that'd be real easy to do, wouldn't it? Well, because I like things like Overwatch and stuff because it's not like... It's stylized. Yeah. yeah. I know what you're saying. I just make you know, fun like, of you because you can't do that. But that's cool. Do you know what I mean? It's meant to be more real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know than, what you're saying. Than turning into like look they did a couple of things like you had a hellhound and other weird things but that was like off to the side finishing moves mm. you know like stick like bugger off don't do this weird <laughs> shit and talking yeah, about yeah. Talk, you know, i'm gonna reel about, you back in here dan because we've uh we're running out of time slowly yeah, but surely i just wanted I've to bring up one minutes. thing yeah go on if you're interested in competitive shooting, check out zleague.com. That's all I'm going okay. to say. Fair enough. There you go. For, for you competitive shooters out there. Uh, the whole competitive thing, though, in Splatoon, I don't think they're going to change with number three because it does work well in the competitive sense and it does make them um, some monies and, and it is so well regarded and, and fun to watch and all that stuff. Uh, so I think the main focus in Splatoon 3 is going to be the single player mode, campaign mode, mm-hmm. which I really hope you could play co-op. That would be awesome. And I mean, I don't have any friends. So online, I mean, playing with randoms is fun, but I definitely like my single player campaigns. That's for sure. And yeah, that's just something that Splatoon 2 was lacking a little bit, at least without its DLC. Yeah. Uh, but the most interesting thing about these Nintendo release dates is the fact that Xenoblade Chronicles 3 has been pushed forward two months. It's releasing two months early. 
I don't remember this happening ever in the world of video games. I mean, I'm sure it has, but I'm honestly just so over being like this game's been delayed or this game, yeah. or this game should have been delayed like Halo or Thou Who Shall Not Be Named, you know? Yeah, interesting that they're bringing it forward. Yeah, I agree. I think it's great. Like, good on them. Because this was originally meant to be a September release and uh, Splatoon was meant to be summer. So it's almost like they've just swapped these two games around. Uh, But, I mean, that's just speculation, obviously. Who knows what really happened? So was Xenoblade 3 finished and they were just sitting on it? Mm. Well, now now that they've brought it forward, it's going to be, I feel like, people might be looking a bit like further into it. If there's any issues with it, people are straight away going to be like, oh, they should have just released it when yeah. it was supposed to release. Look, That's they true. Don't, a lot of people start talking about holding games, right? They mm. hold on to games for a period of time before they release it. Blah, blah. Like everybody right now thinks Breath of the Wild 2 is ready to be released. I, I don't reckon. I, yeah, I highly doubt that. I highly doubt they hold games for more than, say, two months because it Mm. just doesn't make any financial sense. Like, if you have a look at it, like, it it just doesn't make any sense unless it's for a next-gen console or something isn't ready, like a physical part of the hardware is not ready, something like that. It just doesn't make sense. And bringing it forward, if there's problems, they're gonna get they're mm-hmm. gonna get. Re- I mean, look, I'm a little yeah, bit they're gonna get This is a game that I want to jump into. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, in in docked mode only because my <laughs> switch mm. can't stop touching itself. Yeah, it's a bit weird. horny. So yeah. weird. So weird. A bit like Tom. And you're obviously and- just not giving it what it needs, Dan. I know I'm not touching it enough. It has to do it itself. Yeah. I've, <laughs> I've moved on. But, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know. What are your thoughts on moving it early? Like, So I agree with you with the, it doesn't make sense to hold on to titles. Uh, unless the only thing I can think of is we've got, uh, let's just say, for an example, we've got Xenoblade 3 and it's ready at the same time as Breath of the Wilds 2. You know, mm. oh, we've got it. Like, that doesn't make sense to bring them out so close together, yeah. especially yeah. because yeah. they're both such long games, you know? They're both really big RPGs. Uh, so well, then I did hear... Well. Yes, exactly, all that. I, so that I, makes sense from that standpoint. Music. Maybe you can push it out to uh, maybe like three or four months or six month but i don't think there's a long waiting period maybe i did hear from uh player essence who is uh he's really cool if you're into rpg or xenoblade news he's definitely one to check out on youtube but his speculation i think mainly because he loves the developers of xenoblade is that maybe nintendo just trusts monolith soft to get stuff done in a shorter period of time um and that's not necessarily, he doesn't think that, but it's just a, a an idea, you know what I mean? Like maybe the devs of Splatoon are struggling a little bit here so and they need something to fill that time slot. So therefore, Xenoblade 3 is, is the kicker. But I mean, who knows? It's all just speculation. I agree if anything's wrong, like people are going to go be going through this with a fine tooth comb, that's for <laughs> sure. But the gameplay looks amazing. So many characters on screen at one time. So there's a hell of a lot going on here. Um, you can combine your characters into like mech looking, like legion looking things. Mm-hmm. Very which, cool. Which is pretty awesome. Uh, it looks like it's... Got, uh, I kind of don't want to say it but it looks like it's jumping back into like the open world because uh xenoblade and xenoblade 2 or chronicles uh one and two are both like uh they're they're sectioned off you know what i mean so big open areas but they are just areas rather than the whole world being interconnected um which is fine don't get me wrong they're still beautiful uh and they, we all know this can be super law law heavy and law focused and there is 
I think that combining thing is going to be their like mechanic that they're going to push because they've been pushing it a lot on Twitter at the moment. And I also think that's going to like define its combat style because Xenoblades always had this almost like auto battling, um, just like selection of like special moves and how that all happens. But it looks like you're going to be able to like do that with all seven characters. So it's going to be quite involved still. Uh, well, that's good because you want to actually play your game. Yeah. Um, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 got a bit of flack for... Playing itself. Pretty much, yeah. The whole auto-battling system, there wasn't enough to do and the fights just took way too long. So, you know, by the end of it, you were just like, yeah, just waiting for this thing to load again so you can use another special attack. And not, like quite early on as well. What was the Xenoblade game that I saw somebody like enter into a battle... Yeah. Put their controller down, didn't touch it, and they won. Yeah. The and it took like, like what five minutes. What kind of a game is that? Yeah, yeah. I definitely that understand play. that. Now, Definitive Edition, the the first title, uh, is not like that. So I de- I I think it's pretty well regarded that that. Hang on, something wrong with our cat? You just. <laughs> There's a cat outside our house, and our cat's freaking out. Yeah, sorry about that. So they cha- they've released the release dates, but we haven't talked about what the release dates are, have we? No. What are these dates? I thought you had them. <laughs> I Tom's think Tom the, Tom's does. the release date guy. He's the date man. How's the cat? Yeah, he's um pissed off, but he's okay. Is so I a- thought he might have just hurt himself or jumped off something the wrong way but yeah he's just pissed off at a cat outside it's all good all good sorry that that was the cat outside sound yeah um we were we were just wanting to know release dates yeah so we're talking about the release dates but we haven't said the dates oh uh i think it's the 9th of the 7th and the 9th of the 9th so again they've switched the two so um splatoon is now september and uh xenoblade chronicles is now the 7th january July. Mm-hmm. The yeah. 29th of July, yeah. 2022. Yeah, that's the one. So, uh, yeah, oh, what I was going to say quickly is if you want to get into Xenoblade, Dan, play the Definitive Edition on the Switch. Uh, if you don't like 2, don't hold it against them because the DLC for 2 is um, apparently good, but I, I never got around to playing that. And uh, they're all they're all like unique is what I'm trying to say. Mm. So, yeah, I, it's just interesting that they push it forward. That's all. It is interesting. Yeah, yeah that's why I wanted to bring it up. That's It doesn't happen. And I think it's good that it happened, man. Like, that's it is cool. Good. Like, but it is, it is going to be kind of like, you know, when you're doing a test at school and you finish early mm-hmm. and the teachers always say, you, you don't have to hand it in as soon as you finish. Or maybe it was just my mum that said that. Nah, nah, you we can always... read over your things, proofread it, make sure it's all right. Check your answers, do mm-hmm. everything twice if you need. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. You are right. So they'll be under more of a microscope. Yeah, but they'll definitely be under I more mean, scrutiny. I don't I'm, think I'm there's going to be any more hmm. I guess only time will tell. The only way we're going to know is when we play the game. I don't think there's going to be any, like, big flaws in the game so they're far all the footage com- looks great all the mm-hmm. screen capture that they've done on the switch and stuff looks looks pretty fluid oh, uh so you know the, the world looks great yeah see there yeah it's hard to, uh, again we're not going to know until it comes out but i'm excited I mean, it's better than it being delayed I guess. Yeah, yeah. it is yeah. way better than it being delayed. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm it's just annoying when people announce games so early. That's all. Just just stop no, doing you're, it, you know. You're very frustrated about which are four, aren't you? Yeah. Just <laughs> yeah. I just it's not coming out for ages. Calm down. It's the whole thing with CG Project taking back the next gen of Witcher 3 and having to start that whole process again. Um because the war influenced that. And it's like, oh, man, just calm down. Calm down. I don't care about a five-second cinematic trailer of Wonder Woman at the Game Awards. Like, show me some gameplay at, like, a year before release. That's, that's enough. You don't have to hype me up seven years beforehand, right? Mm-hmm. 
Is we agree with that? For the yeah. consumer, yeah. but yeah, as we see, but we already talked about that yeah. last time. Yeah, yeah no, it's I, just I up. agree. Yeah, it's just something I'm annoyed. Now we did obviously miss last week. So we are just going to direct everyone's attention over to idigitalgames.com. There are a bunch of news articles that are this lovely lady. If you want to see last week's news. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's writing a bunch of news articles over at iDigital Games. So head on over there if you're interested in the whole uh, Game Boy Advance emulation rumor that's currently circulating the internet on the Nintendo Switch. There's more information there. Don't forget to pick up a game while you're over there as well because uh, there's a whole bunch of them. Uh, Dan, I believe we hit over 800 recently, hey? Yeah, over 800 games. Yep. Should be awesome. uh, hopefully 1,000 by the end of the week. Is the There you go. Dan's so, going to be working hard. Yeah, he's a hard worker getting your games to you cheap. So definitely go check that out, that's for sure. Um, there is a whole bunch of giveaways and stuff going on through Twitch and iDigital Games as well in the coming months. So definitely just if you go onto iDigital, iDigitalGames.com, all the information will be there. That's what we want. Traffic. Woo. Yeah. Uh, Dan, I think I just kind of did your whole outro yeah. for you. Sorry, is there anything you want to add? Uh, no, there is giveaway this week, though. If you head to twitch.tv forward slash stack Gemma, which we can put in the description, uh, she's doing mm -hmm. a giveaway this week, which is Lego Harry Potter years oh, five to seven. Nice. Get on that, guys. That Those games are so much fun. Yeah, so, Lego games, they're all good. Lego, good. Yeah. Harry Potter, good. The giveaways <laughs> are very popular. Funny. Yeah, that. not, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. People like free stuff. Yes. Where yeah. can we find you guys? Uh, you could go check us out on YouTube. We've got a very entertaining video coming out this week about uh, a bunch of crap that is available on the Switch. Did you know you can spend $20 to get a clock on your Switch, Dan? Rubbish. Yep. If not like it didn't already have one. Yep, like it it wasn't already there. You could also spend fourteen dollars and get a calculator. Yeah, so to save people, there's also night vision though. That thing is pretty cool. Yeah, honestly, yeah. We so spent maybe, too much money testing out garbage games. Yeah, not it, garbage apps. Yeah, for you guys. So yeah, it's a it's, you're welcome. It's a fun video. We got them on sale. It's okay. The clock costs us two dollars with a dollar fifty worth of DLC. <laughs> Still too much. <laughs> oh, no, I know, right? It's, it's crazy. It's honestly insane. But yeah, it's a it's a real fun video. You guys get uh, that DLC for the ones clock. That yeah, yeah, yep. Different faces. Anyways, yeah, you'll have to go watch the video. It's, it's pretty entertaining. Uh, that will be coming out sometime later this week. And our current video is all about cats. So definitely go check that out as well. Uh, Laura, would you like to cover the Twitch side of things? twitch.tv slash some kind of gaming yep short and sweet i like it uh we will be missing a few streams in the next uh coming week because we're moving this whole moving things to definitely impacted that so say goodbye to this backdrop yeah it's the last time this podcast will ever be recorded here in goodbye uh yeah so a bit sad but you know <laughs> new beginnings that's for sure yeah there'll be a brand new one go home every monday It'll yeah. be there. Oh, it'll all still be there, just in a different room. It'll yeah. you probably won't even notice. It'll be quite similar, that's yeah. for sure. Hundred percent. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. And let's to us ramble on as usual. We are some low grade gamers, and we'll catch you in a fortnight because again, Laura and I are moving next week. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. See you later, guys. Bye. Bye.